In this tutorial, we will go over Rhino Twinmotion workflow. You will learn how to integrate Rhino models with Twinmotion and discover some cool features that Twinmotion has to offer. You're even going to see some crazy stunts at the end and also learn how to export final renderings. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Dushan here. Before we start, if this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel as we upload new tutorials each week on Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use these tools specifically for architecture. All right, so let's talk about Twinmotion. Let's see what this software is all about and how we can integrate it with Rhino. So here we are on the homepage of Unreal Engine, page of Twinmotion, so you can see that it's real-time immersive 3D architectural visualization. I've actually tested Twinmotion a couple of times. I like it a lot, actually, especially because it has a great integration features with Rhino. You can start using Twinmotion by, by clicking here. And if you're a student, you can download it for free. You can get it here. And uh, in addition to that, you also need to download Twinmotion plugin for a direct link. So on the right side here, you have direct link for Rhino. You can just download it and install it. And then let's see how this will work in Rhino. Okay, so here we are in Rhino. We have opened Echo Pavilion from artist Thilio Frank. You have a tutorial on our page uh, where we actually designed this in Grasshopper. So you can check that tutorial below in the description. And now let's see how Twinmotion works with Rhino. As you can see, we installed this direct link plugin and you should be seeing this here on the top that says Twinmotion 2020. You simply click on synchronize and now let's see what will happen. Now the Twinmotion will start up in the background and uh, it will open up this model and now let's see what the next step is so the first thing that we need to do is to pick here a new project that we want to develop this is something regarding the navigation so you have a better idea of how twin motion works and here we are we are in the twin motion this is their native environment as you can see you know i can look around i can pan around I can also rotate my view. One thing to notice first is that if we zoom in, you will see that our building here is actually floating for some reason. So right now there is still not a fix for this. So I found that the best way to fix this thing is to select the ground and bring it 40 centimeters up. I know that it sounds strange, but that's what it works. So I'm simply gonna type here, I'm gonna select the ground. I'm gonna type here 0.4. And I will see if I zoom in, that my ground will be exactly where it's supposed to be so there is no gaps at all okay so that's the first thing now i want to show you one cool thing that i found about twin motion that it's very intuitive this means that like everything is very close here so you can find for example this is something that would resemble layers in rhino so you have our model here and then this is the name of the layer so if you go back to rhino uh it says that i need to save this project so let's save it and to keep the link. If you come back to layers, you will see that we have a default layer here. Everything is on this default layer. This means that also we're gonna be importing this layer here. So if you just, you know, click here, that means that we're going to turn off this layer. Now, let me uh, show you how we can organize this layer structure just uh, a bit more so we have a better idea of if you want to change the materials for some of these objects. I'm going to simply minimize this and let's open up Rhino again. And this time, let's do something else. Let's select all of these elements here and let's put them on let's say layer number one and now I'm gonna change the color of the layer and in addition to that I'm going to group this I'm gonna group it and I'm going to call it so here I'm gonna I'm gonna call for example wood material I want this to be a wood and then this bottom area I want to be something else so let's move it to layer three and let's call it ground circle for example it's not very uh, creative, I know. And now let's click synchronize once more. And now you will see that we have a new layer here. We have layer one and layer, layer three. And we, we lost the default layer. This means that now I can simply, you know, select individual layers here. On top of that, I also have the naming. So you can see that they're all called wood because that's the name of the group. So that's very useful if you want to put different materials to different objects in Twinmotion. This is how you would uh, control them. So uh, you control them by layers and also by grouping them. And here you can say uh, it says ground circle. Uh, as I said, very creative. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so now let's see how we can modify the environment. So you can see that we have some like some kind of city in the background. We also have this ground plane. If you zoom in, you can see that there's some kind of tiles there. What if you want to modify this? You simply need to go here on the left on settings and here where it says location, you can click there. Here on the right, you have a background. Click there, you will see that there's a picture of the city here. For example, we can just change this to none and you don't have anything there or we can put some, let's say, 
countryside, for example, let's say that this is okay for this project. Then let's move on and let's see how we can modify now the actual ground plane. All we need to do here is to use the, this material picker here. You can click there, click on the object. It's going to open up the current material, which is here, which is ground. And you can, of course, modify this material here in the settings, or we can actually change this material and add something else. So in this case, let's go with some sort of a ground. For example, here's the ground, nature, and if you scroll down, you can see you have many different options here. You have sand, you have a grass. So let's go with some sort of a grass. For example, this one. You can simply drag and drop. And as easy as that, you can see that now we have the grass in the bottom. What if you want to add more trees or more bushes or whatever? We simply need to go here into the material, into the library. And here you have, for example, the option of a vegetation and landscape. Here we have one single tree that we can just place like this. And you can see that when they start placing these trees, they're actually going to be populated here on the right side. So you can see how I'm actually just like clicking. I'm clicking and these trees are populating here on the, on the right. Then I can also change, for example, their age. So you can see it says like it's 50%. If you put 25, it's going to be like a younger tree or something like this. So it's very cool. You can really uh, play around a lot with these assets that you have in Finmotion. So for example, let's say that you want to have some nicer grass here on the top around our project. So what we can do, uh, let's hide this first layer like so. And now let's go to the top like this. And let's maybe use some sort of a grass here. So let's see what we have here. We have long grass borders, long grass borders. So this is detail for grass, trees. And here is the place where we can find tall grass. Let's use that tall grass here. If I just come like this, it will start to populate. However, you can see that this is not very, it's not very useful if you just like click there and you need to populate like a lot of things by just clicking like this. So it's not so efficient. So how we can solve this? So you can simply, let's first uh, select all of these tall grasses. Let's delete them. And let's use another tool. There is a tool that says here, vegetation paint. You click there and now I can simply either put the trees or I can put the grass and flowers. So in this case, uh, let's put, for example, this tall grass and let's also put this one. So we have two of them, two of those. So we can select both of them and now we can click on this vegetation paint and now we can change if we wanted the diameter of 10 meters. We can change this to, let's say, five meters. It will be smaller. And now let's go to the top like this and let's for example paint here inside and you can see as i'm moving grass is actually populating and now if i zoom in you can see that we have tall grass inside so this is maybe too much at the moment but it's very cool because you can see here on the right side we have painted vegetation which means that if we turn it off we can control it much nicer now and we can also use eraser tool in case that for example if it's going here we can change the diameter let's let's put it to let's say two meters and let's like delete these areas here because we don't want this to intersect with our with our path here that we have. It's quite interesting to play around with Fin Motion and with these options. You can really get a sense of, of how quickly it is to create very cool environments. And that's why I really like Twin Motion because it's super efficient in terms of getting you very cool results in quite short amount of time. So now well, for example, let's say that you're happy with with this grass. Let's bring it back here and what I can do, I can maybe select it and maybe play around with the density. So let's say that I want to be less dense. I can say, let's say 10%. Now you can see how it became not so dense. On the other side, if you put 100, it will be very dense. So, you know, it's up to you to experiment with this to see what is the best, uh, the best option for you. We have additional settings like, you know, the size of the grass. So we can change it from 50 to, let's say 25. So it's not that tall. We have some sort of stripes, wind, dryness and tint. Uh, I think that's fine for now. We're not going to change anything else. Let's say that you're happy with the grass. OK, so now let's see if we can add some more details here. Let's add some flowers. So I'm going to go here to grass and flowers and let's pick up. Uh, let's see if we can play around with these guys. So I'm going to go to the context again and I'm going to go to vegetation paint. And now this time let's choose these models for grass and flowers and let's pick a couple of these for example daisies let me see this one this one and this one and this one i'm gonna drag all of them here and this is gonna allow us to populate these guys for example if you just select first one and then if you click once it will 
give you one one of those groups of these flowers however if you want to distribute all of them at once you need to select this first one and then hold a shift and select all the other ones like this and then let's go to the top again and now let's click on the paint button vegetation paint and now here is the diameter so let's change this to let's say 30 meters so we have a big area here and I'm gonna simply go around like this and I'm gonna create a lot of these uh, geometries so you can see how like my computer is slowly starting to slow down that's because uh, we have a lot of geometry adding at the same time and I'm gonna just add a couple of more of these in the middle here so let's say that I'm happy with this so now you can see I have painted vegetation one and painted vegetation two so this second one is the one that we just did in case you want to see how this would look like let's just go and let's zoom in and let's see okay so now I have a lot of flowers here and uh, they look quite nice but I don't like because the density of them is for example here is too big so what we can do here we can change the density let's change for example from 30 percent to let's say 10 percent and let's see if this is going to change so you can see they're actually starting to get uh, less dense but I still think this is too much so let's go maybe with two percent and you can see how they're becoming thinner and, th and thinner this is maybe okay i think it's okay maybe just a tiny bit less so let's go with one percent with one percent i think that's gonna be fine you can delete the some areas if you want but for now i think i like what we what we come up with here at the end and you can see also inside here we have the paint we have the tall grass and uh, we have those flowers now let's uncover our model let's uncover the layer one and now let's see how we can actually produce the images from this. Before that, I'm also going to show you how to apply materials, but let's add a couple more of these trees here. So let's populate these trees uh, just a tiny bit more. So I'm also going to use the same type of tool. I'm going to use vegetation paint, but this time let's go with trees. I'm going to, for example, use, let's say, maybe this one and let's say this one. Okay, so now we have these trees here. Let's go one by one. So let's first select the gray one and let's put the diameter here to be something bigger, let's say 15 meters. And I'm simply going to paint these trees here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy. And actually they're both selected, so I think that you need to, to do them at the same time if you put them here, which is fine. But you can see, for example, they're actually quite close to each other. So if you want to control them, you can also use the delete uh, option and you know delete the ones that you don't think uh, should be there. But in general, this is a very good way to populate the trees around our building. Maybe put one more here. I'm gonna put this one. Let's place it. I'm gonna bring the diameter even bigger, let's say 50. And I'm gonna simply click once here. I'm gonna click once here, here, here. And I think that's gonna be quite enough. Okay, so we made a forest with like five clicks, which is quite cool, we must admit. And now let's maybe see if we want to change the density of these guys. You know, you can simply click here select them and then click on density here and change it to let's say 15 this one let's say 10 okay so now we have a little bit more better distribution now let's uncover our project and let's see the environment that we created so i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna uncover my layer one and also i if i want to put this one folder we can also do so so i can right click here and I can say new container and I can call it manual trees. So these are all the trees that we added manually. And I'm going to put all of these guys here. So I'm going to put them like this. And now you have a folder of manual trees and then you have paint vegetation one, two, and three. This means that if I select this manual trees, it will select all of them at once. And then I can, of course, move them up or down or wherever I want. Or uh, painted vegetation, it's also like, for example, if you zoom in, you will see that the flowers will start to appear and if you want to you know hide them we can simply click here they'll not they're not going to be there anymore same thing goes with, with trees i'm quite happy with with the result that we got so far so now let's put some materials to our project if you remember we have two materials we have layer one and layer two so first uh, let's go with this one on the bottom so i'm going to select uh, eyedropper tool and i'm going to put here the material and I'm simply going to choose let's say some sort of a concrete so you can have an idea of what kind of concrete you can get by just looking at these and let's go with something for example let's see bare concrete yeah i think bare concrete would do so let's do it like this 
and if you zoom in you will see that uh, the actual scaling of the material will, will be affected by what you did in Rhino. So if you want to have better texturing you also need to do the, the texture mapping in Rhino. However here uh, let's change the scale let's see if we can we, if we can get some better distribution so you can see if the scale is zero I think that's that's much better 0 0.1 if you increase the scale, it's too big. So something like this. Reflection color, uh, more settings. We can put, you know, different type of uh, bumping or maybe bump is not, not not bad to have here. So let's say that we're happy with that concrete. Uh, let's add uh, the final result for our material here. So let's select layer one and let's go with the wood material. So I would rather go with something that is more like something like this. I think this would do well. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So as you can see, uh, that's, that's the fun result that we got. And we also have our concrete inside. So now you can see that uh, my concrete also changed. So the reason is that we need to actually tell in Rhino that this is a separate material. Right now they're actually behaving like it's the same material. So all we need to do is pretty much come here and assign some different material to this guy. So let's say use new material, or let's say something like metal. And this is gonna be uh, one material and then uh, this other one is going to be something else so for example let's say fold material and maybe plaster color let's say something like this now i'm gonna click on synchronize and you will see that now we have two colors here we have the red one and we have this black one so this means that now we can simply again drag and drop this guy here and you can see how the material will stay stay good and now this other one that we need to change which was the concrete but before that let's just come here in our rhino model let's isolate this guy and let's maybe apply some some sort of a concrete material uh, just so that uh, we can actually see the mapping of the material so i'm gonna go here in in my v-ray and i'm simply going to go and i'm gonna put let's say concrete here and uh, let's say this guy at scene and I'm gonna apply to this object. If we go to rendered mode, you will see the mapping. So the mapping is all messed up. All we need to do is come here, go to texture mapping, to box mapping, and now let's create a simple box here, like so. Enter. Now you can see that the mapping is much, much nicer. If you think this is too big, we can rescale the mapping. So we can go here, show mapping and scale this guy. Like so let's make something that makes sense. So for something like this. And now uh, we're ready. Now I'm gonna go and I'm going to uh, click on save and I'm gonna click on synchronize. And you will see that we have something else. All right, so now you can see that we actually even have the material from V-Ray if you want to use it. But in our case, let's let's put some material from Twin Motion. So let's go to concrete and let's use our bare concrete that we used before. And you can see that now mapping is much, much nicer. If you modify the mapping in Rhino, it will be also modified here. So that's also one thing, one thing to know. And now let me show you what else a twin motion can do. So let's say that uh, you want to create some sort of like a movement or you want to put some interesting animation, so to say here. That's also possible. So for example, I'm going to zoom out like this and let's go to here context and let's put, for example, paths here. And I'm going to put custom path. This means that I'm gonna draw something here. So I'm gonna click like this and I'm gonna create a custom path around our building. This is going to be a little bit funny, you will see, but I just want to show you what's what's possible here in Twin Motion. Okay, and now instead of this box, you can see how this box is moving around. We can actually replace the box and we can put whatever we want. So instead of just doing something simple, let's go and let's put uh, something else. So for example, let's put uh, some characters. Why not? Animals and let's put a cow. So you can simply click on the cow. It will replace this box. And now you can see that if we go down, our cow is actually going around our building. The cool thing about all of this is that you can increase the speed of the movement. So now you can see that our cow is moving quite, quite fast, which is uh, quite hilarious here. So let's watch our cow for a second here. Let's go to some nice angle. And sh there she goes. She goes around, she goes around one more time. And now you can even see how, how like you cannot even see her. She's, she's quite fast. So that's just one of the things that I wanted to show you that, that you can do in, in Twin Motion. You can add this kind of paths animation and you can see here it's called custom path. So now let's let's delete this and uh, let's put our image to rendering. So the way that this works, you would simply, for example, let's choose some angle that, that we like. 
So let's say something like this. Okay, so this will be one of my angles. And I'm simply going to go here, media. I'm gonna go to image. And here I'm gonna say create image. And this is going to be the image where I can actually modify it uh, when I come here. I can change the weather, which is quite cool. So you can even change here the season. You can see now we have the winter. This is the winter, uh, the winter look. And now this is like summer look. And this is a little bit like, like let's say autumn. And this is summer again. That's quite, quite cool that you can do this in tune motion. For example, here, if it's rainy, you can change it. And then here is, for example, the sun is the sunny. Now it's, it's like a wet, wet kind of environment. And also you have here the element of growth. So you can also change your trees here quite fast if you want to do so. That's quite cool that you can do. You can also change the wind. You can change the smog. For example, if I change the smog, you will see that this will become like, you know, shady type of uh, environment and, and so on. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we go to this image one. You can, of course, modify the lighting if you want. For example, if you want to change the exposure, you can modify that. You can, you can change the shadows and so on. Simply whatever you would do in V-Ray is similar here with the camera you also have some sort of for example that depth of field effects you can see the difference here so if i change this so let's say 50 you can see what is like uh, how the difference so let's turn this off uh vignetting is like uh, 40 percent that's that's usually fine in visual effects you can have quite cool uh things here for example if we uh, turn on the the visual effects uh, in clear render here Let's go enable. You can see that we have a different type of options. So this is just for, you know, for example, if you want to check the lighting and so on. So once you're ready with our image, all you need to do is click on the export button here. Image, we select it. We click on start export and this is gonna give us the folder that we want to export this to and now you can see estimated time left computing so now this is rendering at the end you will get an image that looks something like this and now you can see the final result here uh, i really like what we come up with in a very short amount of time so yeah i hope that you like this uh, tutorial on finmotion and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more on this topic if you'd like a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning rhino and grasshopper architectural presentation animation rendering you can apply for our rhino for architects 2.0 course first link in the description i'd like to thank all of our patrons thank you guys your support is really appreciated if you like what we do please consider becoming patron yourself